Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to another edition of Crush Lusher Television. All right, we are getting down to the end. So, we're going to do a differential equation. So, dy dx equals parentheses y minus 1 times parentheses x plus 1 times cosine of x squared plus 2x plus pi. All this fun stuff is the derivative of the equation. Okay. So, we're going to pick a hard one because we can always do the easy ones. Let's work on the hard ones because we are uh, almost at the test. So, the first part is probably this probably won't be on the AP because you have to sketch and this is actually pretty easy just follow the slow field so sketch the solution between 0 and 1 and 0 and 5 over 2 and they give you the points right here and so you're just going to sort of follow the slopes and draw a line and this you're going to draw a straight line so to sort of imagine right now what it would look like or you can sort of trace it in your mind or on your paper and then do 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 there it is. So here's the trace. See it's right along. It doesn't go through the all the lines necessarily, but it sort of follows the same path as you pass it. We went over this in class, so we took a little bit of time. It wasn't that complicated. But I want to go through parts B and C with you. Because in this problem, part C is worth six points out of the nine. That's important. If you see that on Tuesday, you gotta knock those out, because that's a huge portion of your grade. Okay, so B, write an equation for the line tangent to the solution of the curve in part A at point 0, 0,5 over 2, okay? And then C, find the particular solution y equals f of x to the differential equation with the initial condition uh, f of 0 is 5 over 2. So those are the two points. So I want you to try B and try C right now. Pause the video. Okay, let's try it. Doom. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so... Change the line is 0, 5 over 2, like that. Okay, no problem. So I need to find the slope, and this is the slope, isn't it? So I'm going to plug in equals. So this is x, this is y, I would say. So y is going to go here, 5 over 2 minus 1, and I'm going to put 2 over 2 here for 1, just to keep the same denominator. Uh, x is 0. And then cosine of 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus pi. Huh. So now I'm going to get my slope. 5 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is 3 over 2. This is 1. This is cosine of pi. 0 plus 0 plus pi is just pi. Cosine of pi, what the hell is that? Uh, 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 uh. This is pi over here on my unit circle. This is pi, and so this point is negative 1, 0. Uh, cosine is the x, sine is the y, and so the answer is negative 1. All right, got it. So this is negative 1. So it's 3 halves times 1 times negative 1. Okay, negative 1 times 3 halves is negative 3 halves. Bam, so that's your slope of your tangent line. So you got your point and you got your slope. So I'm just going to write it like this. y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 5 over 2. Why do I, like, why do I write it like that in slope-intercept form? Because oh, what is this? Oh, yeah, that's the y-intercept. Bam. Like that. You could have wrote it y minus 5 over 2 equals negative 3 over 2 times uh, the quantity x minus 0, and that would have been right also. So if you use point slope form or that, same thing. Okay. Cool. All right, let's see how we did in part C. So I need to get to y equals f of x. So in order to go from here to here, I need to find the derivative. In order to go from the slope to the original function, you need to get the antiderivative. All right, so let's copy this thing down again. dy dx equals y minus 1 x plus 1 cosine of x squared plus 2x plus pi. So it looks intimidating at first, but you just follow the same rules we've been doing. So I want X men and Y's guys. So these are the X's right here, and this is the Y here. So first thing I'm going to do is going to multiply by DX on both sides. Get the X over there. And so I got DY equals Y minus 1, X plus 1, cosine X squared plus 2X plus pi DX. All right, so now I got my x's. All this stuff is the x's here, so this y has got to go, so I'm going to divide by y minus 1. 
So now I got my X Men and my Y's guys. So I got one over Y minus one. I'm gonna separate that like that. Equals X plus one cosine X squared plus two X plus pi dx. Okay, so we've separated. We good. So we're gonna get points for that because we separated properly. Now we gotta integrate. Separate. Integrate. So we're gonna find the integral of this. So. Ooh, the, what I notice is that the derivative of the denominator is the numerator, right? The derivative of this is 1. And so this is a natural log of absolute value of y minus 1, which is the antiderivative. This is not so easy. So this, actually, you got to do u substitution. Because I'm thinking of this. The derivative of this is 2x plus 2, which is close to this. Because I can divide by 2. Watch what I do. So if you, this is like undoing the chain rule. This is where you do substitution. is x squared plus 2x plus pi. And then so du, the derivative of this is going to be 2x plus 2 dx. Remember, this is u substitution. If you need to go back and practice, go ahead and go back and practice. Go in Khan Academy. Go in your notes, practice u substitution if you forgot how to do it. Okay, so I'm looking at this. So I'm almost ready to substitute, but 2x plus 2, I'm looking for x plus 1. So I need to divide this thing by 2, right? Divide this thing by 2, same as multiplying by a half. So 1 half du equals x plus 1 dx. Cool. All right, so now I'm looking good. So equals 1 half. The integral, so I'm not done with integrating yet. I'm just using substitution. So 1 half du is x plus 1 dx. So x plus 1 dx goes here. So this was taken out and this was put in. Now I have cosine of, what's this? That would be u. So now I got all the u's ready to go. So what's the antiderivative now of cosine? Sine cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. So antiderivative of cosine is uh, sine. So natural log of y minus 1 equals 1 half sine of u, d, sine of u plus c. But rather than put u right here, so I could put u and do another step, plus c. I'm just going to substitute right in and get right to my problem. So it's x squared plus 2x plus pi. Bam. And that is the correct antiderivative of this. And if you were to do the chain rule, you get this right here. So you can always double check by doing the chain rule here and then getting this back. All right, now let's get C. So now we got this part, let's get C. So we use the same point right here. This is x, this is y. So x is 0, y is 5 over 2. So natural log of 5 over 2 minus 2 over 2. I'm going to put that 1 in the same denominator. 1 half sine of 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus pi plus c. Uh, sine of pi is this, right? Sine of pi. So I'm going to go back to my work up here. Do, do, do. Sine is the y, and the y is 0 here at, at pi. So the sine is 0. So this right here, this part is 0. This sine of pi is 0. So 0 times a half is 0. So this is just c equals natural log of absolute value of 3 over 2, which is just 3 over 2 because the absolute value of 3 over 2 is just 3 over 2. So natural log of 3 over 2 is C. Bam. Got it. Cool. Okay, last thing we got to do is what? Yeah, we got to solve for Y. We're doing good. So we got to solve for Y. So I'm going to write my thing where I got more room up here. So, so far I have natural log of Y minus 1 equals 1 half sine of x squared plus 2x plus pi plus c, which we just got, which is natural log 
of three over two. Yeah, cool. So even if you get funky numbers like this, just follow what you got because sometimes when you're doing this, like, hey, is this right? I don't really know if that's right. Yeah, it is. Okay, so solving for y, what do you do? Yeah, you raise it to the power of e. So all this stuff becomes e. So what do you notice? So this is now an exponent. So this goes away. So absolute value of y minus 1 equals, oh, and this is the special trick, remember? So it's e to the 1 half sine x squared plus 2x plus pi times e to the natural log of 3 over 2. So we split this. Remember, if you have the same base, you just add the exponents. And so we're actually going backwards on the exponent rule. And so this n -n -n -n, becomes 3 over 2. So that's what we're multiplying by. So I still need some room to write it down down here. Sorry, I'm keep moving around. So now I have absolute value of y minus 1 equals 3 over 2 e to the 1 half. This is all an exponent. x squared plus 2x plus pi. Bam. All right, almost done. Absolute value. So that means this is plus or minus. Which one do I use? Yeah, I use the plus. Why? 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 Because the y is in the positive realm right there. So y is positive. So y minus 1 equals 3 over 2 e to the 1 half sine of x squared plus 2x plus pi. And the last thing you got to do is oh, add 1 to both sides. So y equals 3 over 2 e to the 1 half sine of x squared plus 2x plus pi, all plus 1. Do, 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 do. Give me my six points right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so this is a great one. This one you might want to go ahead and do again. Look at how much work I do. Look at this. The whole page is full of work. So if you need to go do this one again, do this one again. Nice job, everybody. Can't wait to see what you can do on Tuesday. Take care.